But now I'm going to show you something that's really, really good. If you fly first person video, that's where you have a camera in your model and you fly the aircraft as if you were in it, sort of remotely by looking at the camera image. So to fly first person video, you need to have a video transmitter on your plane and that beams the signal back to the ground and then you watch that signal and your RC signal goes up to the model to control the control surfaces. So it's like flying the real thing, but remotely. Um, to do that, you need a video transmitter. Some people had a lot of trouble trying to get 2.4 gigahertz systems to work with 2.4 gigahertz radio transmitter. That's because often they'll clobber each other. But it's where the scan part of the, of the uh, high-tech system comes in really good. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to turn off the, the high-tech system, and I'm going to turn on a video transmitter that I have down here. This is a 600 milliwatt video transmitter. This will produce a new pattern on the spectrum analyzer. You see on the left-hand side of the screen here now, there'll be several peaks starting to appear. You notice them more in the in the density scan first. See this big peak here? And there's two little peaks, one either side, and there's another little peak further down. Now previously, the high-tech system was using the bottom of the band. We saw it was right across here. Now I've turned off the high-tech system, so these um, signals from the high-tech will drop away as the uh, average signal over time decreases. You see, now quite prominently, the video transmitter section here, quite strong. Now, what I'm going to do is show you how the scan system works. In a normal frequency hopping system, when we turn the transmitter on, it's going to be fighting with the video signal. So you're going to get lines on your video picture, and you're also going to get your receiver picking up some of that uh, transmission from the video sender, which will reduce your effective range. Okay, now I'm going to turn on the high-tech transmitter in its scan mode, and you'll see what happens. I'll turn the receiver on, and I'll turn the transmitter on. See the blue LEDs flashing? It indicates it's in scan mode. Now, it will scan the band, and it should note the presence of this interfering signal from our video transmitter. Started transmitting now, you can see the, the frequencies coming up here from the high-tech transmitter. Notice also we get quite a bit of stuff down here, but that disappears. That may just be part of the, the, the communication between the transmitter and receiver to indicate uh, which channels are going to be used. But that'll, that'll disappear shortly once the signals here build up. And you notice this isn't overlapping the video signal. It's, it's moved it to the right. It's actually using about the same width of band that it normally uses, but it's all shifted off to the right. It's away from the video signal. In fact, what I'm going to do now is turn off the video transmitter. And over, it'll take a little bit of time, but you'll see this gradually come down. This, this figure here, the density, will fade away, and all you'll be left with is the uh, high-tech signal there. This is wonderful for FPV because what it means is the signal from your high-tech frequency hopping transmitter is not going to clobber your video signal. So when you're looking at the downlink video signal, you won't get lines and patterns caused by the radio control transmitter. It also means that the video signal from the aircraft will not interfere so much with the receiver. It won't override some of the frequencies that you're using to pick up the signal from the ground. Brilliant. Um, this solves a number of problems with FPV, or it should do, but I haven't flown FPV with it yet. So it remains to be proven. But in theory, this is a perfect solution to the FPV dilemma. So you can use 2.4 gigs down and 2.4 gigs up without interference between the two. So that's a wonderful feature of the high-tech frequency hopping system. Now, as I say, there are downsides, there are upsides. Um, the boot voltage is quite low, reboot voltage quite low at about 3.5 volts, whereas some of the Chinese stuff is right down as much as 2.7 or lower. So it's about a volt higher than some of the Chinese stuff. But it has the supplementary power connection. And that means you can run a completely separate battery for the receiver, allowing you to uh, avoid a brownout in the case of, of heavy servo loads or the, the servo battery going low. Um, if, you, if your supplementary power connection fails, however, you, you're in bad trouble. But also the other thing that I find, as I said, is this, this dangly wire and this antenna that has to be inserted and removed when you change from 72 to... 2.4, that's an issue. And the, um, the, the dual-ended end pin receiver may be an issue for some people. Anyway, I'm going to do some more testing with this system, but I wanted to highlight this, this strange use of the band that Hitech has here. Although I should say that it is extremely resilient. So far, my attempts to lock out the Hitech system with interference have failed in all but absolutely ridiculous overload situations. So I, from a technical perspective, it could be better, but it certainly seems to be more than good enough and better than a lot of other systems. But what I'm going to do now is just to show you what I mean about that band and its use, I'm going to go back to the free sky, turn that on, and compare the use of the band with what we got from the high tech. You'll see the free sky signal starting to come up. Here we go. Note, see that full band's in use now. Even bits at the end here, 
that the high-tech didn't use. Of course, the disadvantages, disadvantage of that is that the video sender will be stomped on by the free sky, and the free sky in turn will stomp on the video sender. Although in practice, the video sender signal had no effect on the free sky movement. But with, this is a review of the high tech, so that's why we will talk about the high tech. Anyway, that's a brief look at the high tech 2.4 gigahertz spread spectrum, well, adapt, what is it, adaptable frequency hopping spread spectrum system, which has some strange anomalies, but seems to work extremely well, and has this annoying. Hand, uh, aerial, you have to glue to the handle if you don't want to keep taking the aerial in and out. Anyway, that's it. I'll be doing a flight test shortly, which I'll post as soon as the weather clears. We've got a huge thunder thunderstorm here at the a huge thunderstorm here at the moment, which is why you can hear all that rumbling in the background. Um, and this high tech 2.4 module and receiver is going to be given away to some lucky RC Model Reviews subscriber on this channel as part of my new program to give away the stuff that I get given to review. So if you want to win this. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you're already subscribed, then you're already in the draw to win, or possibly win, that um, high-tech system. Anyway, thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and there will be a full review on the website fairly shortly of the high-tech uh, adaptive frequency hopping system. Please go and have a look. And high-tech, if you are listening, why? Can you tell me why your system only uses such a small part of the band when it could use the whole lot? Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time on rcmodelreviews.com.